we're here. It's Tuesday night. I'm Kira McCown, your host tonight for this edition of Chicago Corner. So super pumped to be here with all of you live. We've already got a very active uh, chat. So welcome everybody in the chat. We've got Ilhanar, Kathy Power, seeing you already popping in and saying, hey, uh, seeing two cops harassing somebody with a bicycle. And uh, I'm wondering if Lori Lightfoot has uh, paid her tickets yet, or should we say Leadfoot? Um, doubtful. <laughs> so welcome everybody to the show. Um, we've got a great lineup of stories uh, 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 for you. I was going to say lined up for you, but don't want to be too repetitive, too late. With me tonight is the one, the only, Jerry Vassilatos. Driving in motion. <laughs> I'm mobile tonight in the Batmobile. <laughs> I wanted to make sure I was here when the show started. Actually, I'm pulling right up to my apartment, so what I, I at least wanted to be here. I wasn't sure if I'd be home in time, but I didn't want to be uh, AWOL when you started the show. So I will park, head up All right. uh while you guys get stuff started, um, and just say hello. I'm here to join the festivities tonight. Holla. Awesome. And isn't this awesome? Somebody's parked in my handicapped spot so he can unload my his groceries. <laughs> Perfect. Illinois Nazis. I hate Illinois Nazis. <laughs> I mean, I that, the you, you got to put, you know what you're missing is a lawn chair. You got to put a lawn chair yeah. in your well, handicapped parking spot because then you get dibs. Well, the thing That's is, when I'm, when I'm on my crutches, it's a little hard for me to, it's like I, the whole point of the handicapped <laughs> spot is I get in the car, I leave, I come back for me to like put cones and stuff up. It's just idiots. They think, oh, I, you know, there's a fire plug behind me and a handicapped spot in front of me. So what he should have done was parked in front of the fire hydrant so that I can pull into the spot that I had yes. to pay my alderman. For. Absolutely. Anyway, Absolutely. It's just kind of funny. And of course you wouldn't put dibs out if you already have handicap signs up. To be clear for everybody, I was making a joke. All right, we're oh, adding know, to the, I know, I know, <laughs> the stream. The one, the only, Ed Heller. Hello. Oh, hi, guys. Hi, guys. Happy Taco How Tuesday. It, we never have tacos, though. I had meatloaf for dinner. And I think that Ilinar is having an egg mess. And it's their mm. own recipe. So... If you put that egg mess into a tortilla, though, then you've got two Taco Tuesday magic. Just, just an idea. You don't have to take it. How are I'm you so doing tonight, good. Ed? I'm pretty good. I uh, I didn't do tacos, but I did have uh, some homemade burritos, and they were delicious. Ooh, what'd you put in them? What did I put in them? Uh, well, you know, I, I like to do the, uh, you know, whatever's in your freezer and then combine them with all the hot sauces and see what happens kind of thing. So <laughs> I happen to have, uh, I had this uh, cilantro lime rice that was in the freezer. I was like, okay, that's perfect. And then, uh, you, you know how you get those um, those frozen ready-made like grilled chicken strips? So they have the fajita ones. Mm -hmm. So you heat Ooh. that up. And then he got the rice and then, you know, a little salsa verde, um, a little bit of hot sauce, you know, some spices. You wrap them up in a burrito. They're delicious. Not playing around, Ed. Not the playing around when it comes to dinner time. The volcano party then ends up in Ed's mouth with all that hot sauce. That's true. Yeah. Well, I was just going to make a very lewd comment about his butt, too. It's a... Uh, but... well, I'll you know, keep it to those myself. Are, those are lava-based <laughs> solutions we don't talk about on here. I'm sorry. I, I can't help it. Tonight, I made a reference on tonight's Hard Lens Media Show. I forgot what we were talking about. Oh, he was talking about – Kit was talking about, like, somebody shitting the bed. Uh, oh, it was in the Batmobile story. We were talking about the sheriff's basically trying to backpedal on the fact that they'd abuse their authority and their power going from California to Indiana to go harass this pastor who makes cars for this rich dude who missed a payment. And, and Kit said, yeah, they're just trying to make up for the fact that they shit the bed and they're trying to make, you know, say that there's just a wet spot in their pants. And I said, it's called a wet fart. And <laughs> Kit just like was laughing for a good 40 or 50 seconds. He couldn't recover from that. So as yeah. we talk about volcano based solutions with Taco Tuesday and hot sauce. 
<laughs> that's where I found the connection. Anyway. Hey, nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with talking about poop, okay? Uh, I think everybody should talk about poop more. Yeah, it's, everybody it's, poops. It's a human bodily function. Hey, listen, everybody I'm going to excuse poop. myself, go upstairs, and rejoin you guys hopefully within about three minutes. Okay, um, I'll pop you back in when I see you enter the room. See you on the other end. Peace. All right. Well, with that, I think that we ought to go ahead and move in with our first story. What do you think, Ed? Yep. First story is it's a doozy, is oh, is, yeah, is what it one. is. Um, and yeah, you know, this uh, nuts is what that it is. is. It is really nuts, and we know that you know mass killings these days are a little bit of a dime a dozen in America, but it's not every day you see these kinds of killings done without a gun. And so, um, yeah, go ahead and if you have that video. Uh, uh, prepped, we'll go ahead and watch the story here and then we'll talk, dive in. Stand by. And pieces of a car, some of the debris scattered across the street and railroad tracks. This woman who did not want to be identified saw it all happen from her sixth floor window. Out of nowhere, a silver car uh, heading south on Jeffrey, speeding, uh, I don't know how fast, but very, very fast, struck the entire crowd, almost like bowling pins. Um, about three or four bodies went flying through the air and flew several feet into um, the, up the next intersection. It happened near 70th and South Jeffrey Boulevard just after 5 a.m. Witnesses say a large crowd was outside Jeffrey Pub. Several people were trying to break up a fight between two men. They saw a silver sedan speeding southbound down Jeffrey plow into the group. So I was looking out the window. When I stepped away from the window was when I heard the crash. It's like a loud boom, like sound like an explosion. Wow. You thought? Yeah, I thought, like, oh, my God, somebody seriously hurt. You know, I just like, it just shook, woke me up. Three men hit were pronounced dead at the University of Chicago Medical Center. Paramedics took the fourth victim to Stroger Hospital. Five o'clock in the morning, on your way to work, I see two bodies on the ground, lifeless, a lot of trash from different cars. Mm -hmm division out my head. I felt helpless and, and heartbroken. It was just sad to see that because I mean you 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 knew that most of them probably weren't going to survive. Just emotional you know. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, speechless and just to see something like that and um, to know that three people just lost their lives over a senseless bar fight and it looked like pure evil. Like I said it was pure evil. Police continue searching for the car and driver. Yeah. So yeah, well, and it's not they weren't killed because of the bar fight. They were killed because somebody plowed into them while they were outside that bar. Well, and that just brings me to Arturo's um, message, because this was going to be a point, obviously, that I brought up where it's like the 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 mental health state of of, of folks in general. Um, it really needs to be helped in uh, not only in our city, but across the nation, um, likely across the globe, but I can, I can specifically speak to my more immediate area. And, um, it is, it, it's going to become more dangerous as we continue to allow people to just flail in the situations that they're dealing with, whether it is a mental health situation or, um, I mean, this isn't obviously a crime of, uh, you know, ne like necessity, you know, but uh, those are also, you know, robberies uh, and, and killings because of survival are also going to be more and more of an issue if we continue in the trajectory we're on our way. Um, the other piece that um, wasn't clear in that report, but um, only became clear to me when I went to the comments threads of the stories that I was reading is that um, that Jeffrey Pub is an LGBTQIA plus pub. Um, and as of right now, authorities are not considering the attack a hate crime because they don't know the driver's motive yet. Um, now, a lot of people are saying that there was a scuffle inside the bar that then got pushed outside of the bar. Um, and they're, you know, basically saying that this individual got into their car and, and drove it uh, at high speeds toward a large crowd that ultimately ended up killing uh, three different men. Um, some of the witnesses said, like, it didn't look targeted at all because of the, the speed that they were driving at. 
Um, and then, like I said, some people were saying it was because of a scuffle inside a bar. I think it all sounds very, very unclear personally. Um, the victims are identified as uh, Devonta Vivetter, who's 27, um, uh, Jalen Osley, 23, uh, and, uh, oh gosh, do I not have the third person's name here? How is that possible? Um, well, if we can find that in the article, I want to make sure that we do, um, we do give that information. Uh, detectives have been in touch with employees of Jeffrey Pub to try to piece together a timeline of events. Officials said it appears that there is an argument inside the pub that spilled out in the street in what Chief of Detectives Brendan uh, Dinahan called an ongoing altercation. Um, now, to be clear, eight other people were killed and more than 30 others were wounded in shootings across the city of Chicago over the weekend. Um, so I don't want to downplay those murders just because this criminal was using a different tool to kill people. Um, not to mention in the chat threads across the story, people were comparing this to guns by saying things like we need to ban assault vehicles and we should think about creating more restrictions on cars. And I mean, I'm not totally sure if I need to get into why those arguments don't really hold much water. Um, so but, what, we should ban automatic transmissions. <laughs> exactly. Well, and also there are already so many restrictions on getting a car. You have to be licensed. You have to have the car registered. You have to pay so many, you know, uh, fees to the city. You get ticketed if you put your car anywhere that, it, you know, imagine every time you got ticketed, if your gun was outside of it safe, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, it's not quite to that level. Um, not to mention people need their cars to get to work, to get to school, you know, to manage their daily lives. And so, again, like it, it, it's not really an argument that holds water, in my opinion. Um, and I'm always happy to have that conversation with folks. Um, and what are well, your you know, thoughts on this on this, Ed? Well, uh, well, um, there is there's actually video of the hit and run happening. Oh, We're not going to show it. I could We're not going to show it here. Is uh, it really but, awful? Well, yeah, because I the, mean, it, she said the bodies flew to the next yeah. intersection. Yeah. So, I mean, we uh, we can't speak to the intent of the person who was driving. Um, but I mean, you know, I mean, unless you're, you know, unless you lost control of your vehicle, you're you're aiming to hit somebody. And uh, that's not cool. That's evil. That's. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we and we we saw this happen um, during the Black Lives Matter protests. Uh, you know, some guy in a truck decided that uh, he right. was, he didn't care about the people protesting. Was, Let's plow through the people protesting. Heather Hauer lost her life. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, that's not we shouldn't be doing uh, these types. We shouldn't have this type of behavior. Uh, people shouldn't. Uh, be getting behind the wheel of a car and, you know, and sure you make fun. Oh yeah. 50 points. If I hit the geese that are crossing the street. Right. Right. Uh, no, it's not cool, dude. You're it's not, life's not a video game. You're, you're making a joke. It's a morbid joke. Sure. Dark humor is fine. Uh, don't hit the geese is what I'm saying. Don't, you know, <laughs> don't, you don't wanna, do it. Don't do it. You think you you think about these things. You don't do them. Right, right, right. You like so why? It's like somebody you can joke like, about it, but don't do it. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to, like you. You should not have to be told that you know. Dry, you know, like it's like you know what? What's that movie? Death Proof. I haven't where seen the that. Where the guy? Either. Oh, the uh, you never saw that movie? Oh, I've okay. never even heard of it. Not the, only have I not seen it, I haven't heard of it. It's um, death proof. Uh, what the hell's his name? Uh, okay. Driving the car. Someone in the chat knows death proof. <laughs> I'm positive. And Kathy Miguel knows Green. what's his what's his name driving the car? Was it? Miguel uh, says it, It's a Tarantino true. movie, but oh, it's, it's a Tarantino uh, movie. How am I? Yeah. Not um. What the hell is, is it? His name? Is it the guy Tarantino who, playing? No, the guy who plays Snake Plissken in in uh, in that other movie. Kurt, Kurt uh, Russell. Douglas? Kurt Russell. Kurt, thank uh, you. Yeah, Russell. That's it. 
so Kurt Russell plays this guy who drives this car that's like super reinforced and everything. And he goes around and he gives, giving people rides and stuff, picks people up and then he drives his car. And it's like, it's like they, it's like the passenger doesn't have a seatbelt. He's got a seatbelt. Mm, he drives okay. really fast. And you know, he's, and if you're not, if he's, if you're a passenger in his car or if you're somebody in the way of his car, uh, you're you're an obstacle for him you're basically effed okay that's uh-huh. this is a movie this is fiction the this is not real life <laughs> correct yes and sometimes i do feel like we need to remind people of that that that's um, i mean that's that's the only reason i brought that movie up other than it's a pretty awesome movie. well i'll now have to watch it um and kathy's wondering he's not caught is he Unless uh, something broke in the last, you know, hour or two, as far as I know. When I checked earlier today, uh, they found the vehicle, but not the driver. Mm -hmm. So I guess they're still basically asking around, trying to see if anybody saw, saw it happen. Anybody happened to see who the driver was. Yeah. And then Pat said... People are just driving too fast, not stopping at stop, stop signs, not yielding to pedestrians or other cars. People have gotten so aggressive and arrogant in their driving. Yeah, um, well, yeah, I do that, know a lot of uh, not a lot of. There have been a couple uh, a couple toddlers even in recent months that have died due to um, uh, car accidents. Drivers hitting them. Yeah, um, there were, I saw a story recently. Some kid who actually got hit by a car not once but twice. And I was like, what? I'm like, did is this kid walking out into traffic and then got hit by a car and then walking out into traffic and then got killed by a car? I'm like, how do, how do these stories ha- – how does – I mean – Yeah, yeah, absolutely. People, if you're in a car, spend <laughs> some time just to just be aware be of your surroundings. Yeah, uh, you're absolutely. Absolutely. Not- if, I understand you're in a hurry, but come on. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. We're not, you know, I, I think one of the things that our culture in general could probably take on is slowing down. Um, but un- unfortunately, uh, our culture is based on productivity and capitalism. And so slowing down is not often, um, you know, one of our uh, priorities as as people. So... Um, but th- that's something that I would like to push against largely in, in our cultural conversation um, that we do. We need to slow down. And when you find yourself rushing in a situation, just stop a moment and take a few breaths and just be in the present moment uh, to the best of your ability. If you're going to be late somewhere, voice to text somebody and let them know so that you can calm down and you can be as relaxed as possible behind the wheel of a dangerous, I, you know, item vehicle. Um, it's, it, it's, it's very, very important that we, we take on the responsibility of driving, uh, the way that, uh, you know, at the, at the level that it actually, um, impacts people when there's something that goes wrong. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously this guy, uh, did an intentional hit and, uh, I, I think that just speaks a lot more to, uh, what the mental health situation in, uh, in our city and in our country is right now. Um, and Kathy asked, was he high when he was going through? And I, and I, and I was thinking, no, probably just drunk because he came out of a bar supposedly. Um, and Jerry is starting to get his drink on. I did not grab a cocktail because I was too busy. Uh, only I was too busy trying to restart my computer and figure out why it wasn't working. Only because <laughs> only because Kathy thought I was drinking root beer, so I just wanted to. I didn't want to interrupt you. <laughs> figured I'd signal her. No, I'm I'm already started with the hard stuff as we get in these stories. We need to like. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you don't so, want to get stressed so, out over. So, so Jerry, yeah. we uh, we played a video that described uh, the hit and run with the th- three men that were killed on the south side. And, uh, yeah. The latest that we had heard was that they found the car, but not the driver. Saw that. Uh, yeah. And I had brought up how, you know, life is not a video game or a movie like Death Proof, the Tarantino movie, if you're probably familiar with. I am. I and some so, comments, some, some thoughts about that. So, yeah, and then uh, Miguel helped me remember it was Kurt Russell. 
who was the driver in that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot more to say other than be careful driving. Yeah. And be you careful know, crossing streets. Uh, and be well, you know why you have to be crowds and be careful. Take care of each alive. other. You know, we got we got to watch out for each other. Let me uh, also include. And then those. some things are like you know some things are just not worth you know going to prison for you know the vehicular homicide. Really was was the was the was the fight that maybe you had really that bad? Right. Right. That you, that Probably you're not. To, I mean, that you're willing to go to, to, to prison for vehicular homicide. Really? Right. Right. Well, I don't know if you guys mentioned, saw in the news, it's kind of related when we're talking about people not slowing down. And I know that you, I, I caught the tail end of this conversation mm -hmm. where you mentioned, you know, it's quite evil for hit and run drivers to just take off. Did you see on Lakeshore Drive uh, down by the fountain Apparently, um, people are routinely running the red there, running the pedestrian crosswalk, not allowing people to get across Lakeshore Drive, making left turns and, and hitting pedestrians. And the Chicago Police Department's solution to the problem, when an activist group was there to help pedestrians get across the street and monitor safety, the police department's solution was to go down there and turn the traffic lights on to green for five minutes straight. Did you see this story? I think it was on Block Club. No, I I heard something. I heard something about. It. I saw some somebody yeah. on Twitter had posted a video video where they were complaining right. how they were giving uh tra they were giving uh road traffic uh priority instead of pedestrians. Pedestrians. And it shouldn't it be the opposite. Well, someone made the same comment. I believe we looked at the same Twitter thread that it, the cops are too fucking lazy to get off their asses and ticket the drivers and stop the drivers that are endangering pedestrians' lives their solution is to go out and let the green run longer. The activists at that intersection down on Lakeshore Drive were outraged, and a lot of them wow. took video of it. And they put it on social media asking the police department, I think the mayor, what's the fucking problem here? Why, why, you know, when you're penalizing everyone all over the rest of the city with the speed cams and the red light cameras, and you've got the cops going down to Lakeshore Drive basically enabling drivers by letting it run letting the greens go faster, make it, making it harder for people to get across the street instead of sitting there on the side and actually deciding to pull over drivers who are endangering pedestrians' lives. Once again, guys, what's the messaging? What are the optics? Is it about safety or is it about revenue collection? I mean, in that case, I'd say that's a place where they should be collecting revenue. Well, that's what I was going to say. Pat made a really great point. How stupid is that? Lakeshore at the Fountain is where the tourists cross. We're going yep. to lose money. And we're going to kill tourists. That's also not a good luck. Now, well, Kathy, uh, why don't they have a and why don't they have a pedestrian overpass or two over That's there? Not a, right. Hello. That's where the money should be going, not to, not to NASCAR. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Infrastructure. We don't oh. have money for infrastructure. Except unless it's a phony town, right? If you build right. For the That's what we have money we, for. By the or way, unless I it's came Millennium up with some Park. of my own town names. I came up with some of my own town names. Please, and, uh, I wanted to share because I liked everybody's names so much that I wanted to share my my cop town names. Um, oh, okay, so I'm ready. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. One second here. <laughs> Just one second here. I was enjoying. Okay, we'll just play half. Um, go ahead, Kira. And after you after you show your names, Kira, I have a video to share of what's to come with Lightfoot's priorities with NASCAR as opposed to an overpass, as you guys just very smartly recommended. All right, here we go. Uh, you guys can tell me what you think. There's, I feared for my life a stan. <laughs> <laughs> The stand. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we are um, in bacon, America, though, Kira. Bacon Ward. It would be. It would be I, I fear for my life. That's Berg. good. I like that. Is that it? It'd be. I fear for my life. Berg. Oh yeah, I, I fear for my America. life. Berg. I yeah. feel for my life. Berg. Or okay. Bacon or bacon burn. Bacon burn too. Bacon yeah. burn would be good. Oh, that's good. This is my favorite one. Stop resisting, Tin. 
Yes. <laughs> um, this is for gay. If it if they set it up like it was a gated community, right? It would be the Thin Blue Boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, this next one's pretty good. Escalationville. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, do you have then, more? That, that was all. I, that was my last oh, one. Okay. Um, and Kathy Power said that I emailed the name, and I think that what she emailed was Flunkin' Duncan, which I thought was fun. <laughs> oh, shit, sorry. Oh, there it is, Duncan Flunkin'. I, I keep, it's my fault. I'm going to keep my hands off the switcher. <laughs> I think we got three people in the buttons at once here. Put your hand on your back, Cumberbatch. <laughs> All right. Oh, I All brought right. the time machine. Let's take a look into the future. Chicago NASCAR, what to expect. <laughs> Just imagine this on Lakeshore Drive. Dude, I've watched enough NASCAR in my life. My mom's a huge NASCAR fan. Like, I can't and imagine. Pironi looks to be perfectly all right. And that passing <laughs> maneuver was at the Mirabeau, where lap after lap he had tried to get past Iggy. Pironi leads. I'm sorry, but I need to cross the street over on Lakeshore Drive. Can you guys stop, pause the race for a couple minutes? Right? <laughs> So I don't think these are the kind of cars they're going to be using. I think they're going to be using no. the, yeah, but still. They're going to use the NASCAR. Yeah. I had some other video of the normal NASCARs piling up in the same way. And I'm like, when you see how fast they're going, this is not what Lakeshore Drive was designed for, Mayor Leadhead. No, I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I can't even imagine what it's going to be like. I, the moment I heard that there was going to be NASCAR on Lakeshore, I was like, that's not safe. Um, no. And, and I mean, I'll probably watch from TV and just see what happens on it, if I'm being honest, but more of a curiosity, sort of like a train wreck, I can't not turn my head and look situation um, than any level of excitement or, you know, being on the edge of my seat about anything. Um, we, can, yeah, so we, we can only hope it will be this entertaining. <laughs> well, not Walker Drive, if my estimations are... Right. I love Lower Wacker Drive. Lower Wacker Drive is very fun to drive. I must admit, that is a scene I'd prefer to see. This would actually be an entertaining show. Yeah, it would. <laughs> Only if the police were. I mean, can you imagine those guys just a slight tap from one part of another one and then end up into one of those burgers? And, they, and then they take out the brown line or the green line. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> That must be fun to do. We have a winner, Jake and Elwood Wood. Anyway, I want to take a picture. We have a yellow flag on the track. Everyone, please remain in your car's position. We have a yellow flag on the track. We have several law enforcement vehicles obstructing the second half of the track. <laughs> and they're from the 1980s. Very strange. <laughs> Good suspension right. on those cars, though. There was, uh, so uh, back to the stories. Yes. <laughs> a little segue there. Uh, yeah. And we're, we're coming back. Um, so... There was also um, another more novel, I guess, another shooting, shooting. Yeah. Um, over at Six Flags in Gurney. Um, uh, authorities said that a white sedan entered the parking lot of Six Flags around 7.50, 5.0 p.m. 
and drove toward the front park entrance. Gurney police said more than one person exited the sedan and began shooting toward another individual in the parking lot. And after firing multiple times, they, quote, got back into the white sedan and quickly left the area. Um, it was not an active shooter incident inside the park, said police. But what, what was that mean? It's hinky. Oh, it's strange. It sounds like it was a setup. Well, what I thought was actually like more telling about this whole thing, because apparently someone came up in the parking lot, stepped out. It sounded like it was targeted. The various were shooting at specific people and then they left. Um, and yeah. honestly, like what I was thought was a little bit more of like uh, something to bring up is the description of the scene uh, inside of the park and quotes from the witnesses in the story. So just listen to some of this. Okay. Um, quote, the way people were panicking, it made us feel like the shooter was close by. And when we saw the police entering the park, we thought the shooter was loose somewhere inside. The gunshot sparked chaos, confusion, and fear among hundreds of park visitors. Many fled the same parking lot where shots were fired. Others hopped fences and tried to break open locked exit gates to escape. Eddie Cardenas was with his fiance and their three kids when his mother-in-law called and she had left the park for, uh, for the car to get a head start on prepping food. And she said, quote, stay inside the park. There's a shooter out here. There's a shooter out here. There's bodies falling. She cried into the phone after watching the shooting. Shocked by the news, Cardenas and his fiance began to plan, but then dozens of people started running, he said. There's a shooter, there's a shooter, there's a shooter, he remembered hearing. The couple grabbed their kids, a seven-year-old boy, a five-year-old boy, and a five-month-old girl, and started running. They took shelter behind Soaring Raging Bull Steel Coaster, one of my favorite roller coasters, BT Dubs, and took off again a few moments later. Their stroller was moving too slow, so Cardenas tossed it and put his five-year-old on his shoulder. His fiance left her purse behind. His seven-year-old son ran ahead and was almost lost in the confusion. Cardenas saw police with guns drawn in a video he shared with the Tribune. And outside the park, Cardenas, re Cardenas regrouped with uh, nearly 30 family members he had joined for the Great America trip. He, uh, he saw scared uncles waiting for their teens who had split off earlier to go on rides. And it reminded me of all the videos that we showed of crowds during the 4th of July events, events when they thought that there was an active shooter and all of a sudden they'd start to stampede or even the um, in May, at the end of May in New York, there was a stampede of, of, of panicked people that thought there was an active shooter that ended up injuring 16 people. And so now we're in a situation where you know, I think the old the old adage of like you can't shout fire in a crowded theater is going to soon be shifted to you can't shout like active shooter, shooter in <laughs> in a crowded area because now it's actually dangerous to do that because people are ready to react. Well, two things. Uh, obviously, there was mass confusion, but I I wonder if despite the fact witnesses said the car shot at some people and drove away. Maybe law enforcement thought that that car could have parked somewhere and the active shooter could have run into the park. So I don't blame the fact that, you know, they, they were focused on the fact that it could have been a lot worse if whoever the shooter was got out of ditched the car and ran into the park. Um, I don't want to call this an overreaction, but uh, certainly the, the, the aftermath um, from that reaction to not knowing what the hell's going on when you've got somebody with a gun freaking everybody out and especially so close after the 4th of July incident, yeah. not incident, the 4th of July massacre in Highland Park. Mm -hmm. I completely understand. I mean, we, we talked about this, Kira, you were saying you don't like, you don't want to go out in public because no, you, I'm it, not going to go to a crowded place. Are you crazy? Yeah. I didn't go to crowded places before it because I'm not, I don't go to festivals or anything. Cause yeah. I'm not really a hermit. I just do other stuff. Um, but I, you know, now you'll be hard pressed to get me to go like somewhere unless I'm really dying to get there. Uh, no pun intended at all, Jesus. Um, but I think that what we're seeing here is just a real collective trauma. Like yeah. I'm not saying that it's an overreaction. Oh no, 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 no. It's, it's not. A no. It's, a, it's a normal reaction. reaction. It's illogical. What we're dealing it's, with. And, and all like, rooted in the fact we will not do anything to stop the curb of how easy it is for maniacs to get their hands on guns. Specifically, these crazy assault weapons. 
as and as far as amusement parks go, uh, a place like Six Flags, they have a huge security apparatus yes, there with cameras do. and screens and a security force and all of that stuff. And they, I guess they basically need to be a little more proactive in diffusing situations when, when they know it's not necessarily an active shooter running around their park because they, because they, because they could help uh, prevent people from going uh, beyond reaction when it happened to be somebody in a parking lot might have popped. I guess they did. They shot somebody, mm-hmm. right? Somebody got yep, shot in the But that, but that van or whatever didn't get. I guess didn't get into the park. So, in a perfect they, world, Ed, if you know the moment that there's a shooting in a perfect world, like yeah. let's talk about Six Flags, and security and law enforcement there knew there was a shooting instantly, shut down the park, shut down the gates. Right or or Get figure out on all yeah, the have a game plan on the other side. Yeah. There's nothing to panic about. We've shut down the park. You're safe on the inside. Making sure that there's no you know law enforcement yeah. is dispatched to form a perimeter to prevent anybody from going into the park that might be trying to escape that parking lot. Yeah. That's I mean, the ideal the, scenario. <laughs> yeah. The the important part is is to make sure that your guests are informed. Yeah. Yeah. So that they don't make rash decisions, because yeah, like you said, I mean, it can create a stampede yeah. that it doesn't Absolutely. have to create. And I think that we're going to start seeing a lot more of that kind of stuff commonly. Um, okay, so Art has an interesting comment here. Many of the shooters who commit these assaults are mimicking the video games they played, where they don't see the real consequences of being a criminal. You get taken down. Um, yeah. I'm sure that there are some nuts who play video games who might think that it's the same thing, Art, but yeah. let's not so, demonize video game players because, I mean, yeah. there's a deeper problem. But you know, you're not, yeah. the deeper you're not going to respawn. Yeah, the, right, right. And the deeper problem is their, their um, access to the weapons to begin with. Yeah, the real and, weapons, uh, right? Obviously, access in a video game is much easy, is easy, but it shouldn't be as easy IRL. Because <laughs> I love my video games, but it doesn't yeah. mean as much as I like knocking a guy down on a World War One battlefield in a video game, I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to go try this in real life, you know? Yeah. But then of course, and, even, and even back in the dawn of video games, you you know, started out, you only had three lives. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you know? that's right. You know, it took a while until you could, you know, you could earn extra lives by getting extra points, or then there were those, then, the, then you got the cheat codes, and then now, just all the modern games, they just let you restart from wherever, uh, yeah. you know, which I think is, you know, it's kind of lame. You should start well, yeah. with three lives. That's, That's what they, it. These battlefield games. I would are- never make it through any video game ever. So Pat brings up a good point. My, bus- my husband was a vet. He taught me survival skills in a bad situation. We need more of that. Sadly, yes. I don't think it's a bad thing anyway, along with emergency response, maybe basic first aid training. People, there was people one stuff. There was one story in one of the articles I read because I usually end up reading anywhere from two to like five articles on any get one given story. And there was one story where some a parent was talking about their daughter who had already been doing active shooter drills in school. So she had she knew all of these things to do, and she was actually directing her family to take cover in an appropriate way and. And on all of that, I mean, I don't even know the first thing to like, you know, taking cover because a, an active shooter might be in my school. I didn't have to deal with that when I was in high school. Um, but but I thought that was also extremely telling of our times. Um, you know, and just to just to bring it back around, uh, you know, to Highland Park and what happened there over Fourth of July. Just recently on Monday. Um, the uh, Highland Park City Council unanimously called for state and national bans on semi-automatic weapons, high-capacity ammunition magazines, and body armor, escalating the gun control advocacy some city officials have been pursuing after the deadly mass shooting at the suburb's Independence Day Parade. Um, The North Suburb had its own ban on assault-style weapons since 2013 already, um in the wake of the sandy hook elementary school shootings but uh the mayor there nancy rotering said that a local ordinance is not enough um she says mass shootings are a uniquely american problem and highland park is not an island 
no community is safe until broader action is taken. Only took seven people being shot in Highland Park for them yeah. to suddenly, you know. Well, they already had a ban, so now they're calling well, for a national. At least, now yeah, but, for yeah national I think action. I think the the point they were bringing up is that that the while this is symbolic, they are calling for a broader action that would actually be effective because mm -hmm. they know that you can't just ban weapons in Highland Park and expect the problem to go away. I guess because you've got neighborhoods and cities and states surrounding you that haven't. The upside to all of this is maybe the rest of the country will pay attention to an affluent white suburb. That's right? true. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, unlikely. But well, well they're going to have they're going to be more vocal about it because it's of, a little harder to ignore when it's, you know, when it's a, a bunch of not not the regular streets of Chicago. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And that's why I, you know, whenever I do talk about shootings, um, you know, shootings like the Highland shooter or, or the intentional hit and run, I do like to mention that like, Hey, also there were eight killed and 36 wounded this weekend just by shootings in Chicago. In Chicago right? Regularly. It's like, we a don't want to downplay, right? Yeah, yeah yep. exactly. Exactly. So um, I do always want to, you know, uh, respect the fact that like all life is precious regardless of who the criminal is how they went and how you know massive the 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 killings were you know it's it's it is it all impacts all of us and like i said there is a collective trauma that we are all experiencing and um and and, and i think it's bringing us into some really even even heightened dangerous directions that's all i'm saying you're right all right. So the next story is, I mean, nobody's dying, but it's not, <laughs> um, it's pretty rough as well. So a 36 year old restaurant worker admitted to Chicago police that he groped women wearing something hot while riding his one wheel motorized scooter on his way to work. When I first read that, by the way, I thought he was saying he was wearing something hot. And I was like, well, I need to see this outfit. But no, he meant that the women were wearing Blame something the victim. Hot. Yep, um, well, yep, yep, yep. And then I, yeah, but it was, it was interesting where my mind went on that. I was like that he was wearing something hot. Anyway, his name is Victor Manuel Reyes of the 1300 block of West 19th street. He was arrested Friday at his job at a restaurant in the 500 block um of east illinois street manuel reyes faces multiple counts of aggravated battery aggravated criminal sex abuse and criminal sex assault prosecutors said two victims and a former co-worker positively identified him from surveillance images and during a 15-minute bail hearing broadcast on youtube prosecutors linked manuel reyes to four separate groping incidences with three occurring on the same day august 4th during his scooter trip to work near navy pier all four incidents, um, authorities said Manuel Reyes approached women walking on the street from behind on his scooter, quickly groping their buttocks and genitals before zipping away. In one of the incidences, he allegedly sexually penetrated one of the victims who was wearing a dress. Um, in all, downtown Groper attacked women and then... Uh, in all, downtown Groper attacked women and then took off on a motorized skateboard at least six times between June and August. But three survivors told Block Club Chicago that they faced issues when trying to report the man and stop the attacks. So before we get into the issues that the survivors are having with reporting these attacks, any thoughts on the um, one-wheeled Groper? It, uh, it feels like we've entered uh, a show where we are having stories where we have to tell people, this is not okay. You cannot do this. This is not normal behavior. Mm -mm. It's not acceptable to roll around on your one wheel throughout the city groping people. It's not okay. Yeah. First, we had Machete. Now we have the Groper. Chicago oh. is Gotham. Well, yeah. Well, and then we have more and more crazy supervillains. And the I'm Groper runs around on. on a one-wheeled scooter, right? Like, yeah, yeah. How, you don't get much more supervillainy I'm, than that. I well, feel like. we, and then, of course, we have the Death Proof driver too. Yeah, so. I think I think we need I think we need 
CPD is dropping the ball. We need a we need a vigilante, guys. We need a vigilante who wears we a need, costume. I, I what I'm you thinking. know what? You, you, you think I'm joking, but uh. <laughs> Chicago's gonna be on saving. Give me more time. There are good people here. No, yeah, just just not those people. Yeah, obviously that's not gonna happen. Um, but. <laughs> You know, we, 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 it's nice to, uh, what's the word, uh, wish fulfillment. <laughs> nice yeah. to fantasize where, where the CPD is, you know, letting, letting the lights run five minutes so that, you know, pedestrians can't get across Lakeshore Drive. Uh, they're routinely shooting, um, you know, Chicagoans in the back who aren't armed and aren't any, any threat or danger to them, despite the fact that they claim they feared for their lives. Meanwhile, we've got Machete. We've got uh, race car, death proof man, and the groper running. Oh, death proof, and 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 the and the one wheeled groper. That's what Ed was calling him in the headlines, and I liked it. One wheeled groper, big yeah. fan of that. Yeah. And a mayor, and a mayor that looks like she's she's a comic book character. I am a leprechaun. <laughs> and a mayor, and a mayor. Oh. <laughs> Is that me gold? What the hell are you? I'm a leprechaun, my dear. Here, this is what you're looking for, right? Ah. Mayor cosplay. That's not the first time. I mean, we we make fun of the we make fun a lot of the of the leprechaun um, outfit that she wore, but she she's really into her cosplay, guys. She is into cosplay. I kind of, there's a part of it that I do respect because I love costumes too. Oh, I, yeah, I, just, I, I just wish I wish she were a competent mayor so we could enjoy it. So we could I enjoy like, her costumes, right? Yeah. I am not I am not cosplay shaming. I mean, I, I, I love my costumes at Halloween. Maybe not the rest of the year. And I do admire like a really well put together outfit, but she's just like overboard with it. I, I just I'm wondering what's going on in that marriage in the bedroom. But yeah, that's, that's, yeah. I, I think you've just become a curmudgeon toward her, which is totally uh, understandable. I think Ed's right. I think it's just because of her incompetence that yeah. makes you look at that and be like, what the fuck are you what doing? Are you thinking? Yeah, what are you fucking doing right now? Get on some normal clothes and run the city. The optics are ridiculous. <laughs> her priority is on dressing up as opposed to like managing things like a normal mayor should. As, as much as we like to, um, you know, uh, criticize Rahm Emanuel, you know, he didn't try to divert or deflect us with crazy cosplay. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Well, so there are kind of like in this whole downtown groper story, there's kind of like a sub bad guy too here in this whole story. Um, and that is basically the, the, the police and their re response or lack of response. Yeah. Um, to the women who were reporting the groper, not taking Shot. them seriously. A woman who didn't want to be named told Block Club Chicago she was assaulted on August 2nd near Millennium Park. A man approached her from behind in broad daylight, grabbed her and fondled her, she said. With help from a witness, the woman reported the attack immediately. Three days went by before her case was assigned to a detective. When she tried to help investigators by sharing video evidence she obtained, she was ignored. She says, I feel like I did everything to put them in like the best position. And it was still kind of treated as a joke and just discarded. And I had to chase after them basically every day. A sexual violence expert said that the issues that women experience are things that make it harder for all survivors of sexual violence to report crimes. Mallory Littlejohn, legal director of the uh, Chicago Alliance Against Sexual Exploitation said reporting sexual violence can be a prolonged and confusing process. An Illinois law requires police officers to complete written reports for all allegations of sexual harm, but the system has major flaws. Like, for example, it takes an average of 10 days for an assault case to get assigned to a detective. So two weeks, almost two full weeks before a detective gets assigned to a case. Additionally, survivors will wait 13 to 72 days on average for an arrest which only occurred in 10 to 20% of reports made to the police. Initial reports are supposed to only have the basic information until a case gets assigned to a detective who will follow up with the survivor to hear the details of the incident. So then they're waiting forever to give the details of an incident, right? And it's like, you know, they're, they're, they've been victimized and then they have to recall it. And apparently they have to tell the story over and over and over again. And anybody who knows about trauma knows that having to recount stories 
um, can actually re-traumatize people. And so we have these survivors of these of these um, assaults coming in and retelling a story that they're probably highly uncomfortable telling in the first place, having to relive it like in their brain under their skin every single time they tell it. Um, and it's just not good for the well-being of these people who are dealing with the sexual assault. So, I mean, it's already hard to report sexual assault and add on top of the, the fact that only about 30% of assaults uh, uh, get reported, which I thought was kind of high, if I'm being honest. I've been assaulted. I've never reported an assault. And I've been assaulted, I don't know, half a dozen times. You have uh, to? Yeah. Are you oh, kidding me? I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Women get assaulted I mean, Sadly, I'm not surprised. That works. I didn't realize yep. that. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. And I've actually never reported any of my assaults, whether they've just been physical attacks or or, or sexual in nature. So the fact that only 30% of assaults are getting reported, and I think that's kind of a high number, um, and then only 10 to 20% of those actually come to any sort of like, you know, conclusion or uh, uh, justice for the people dealing with the assaults is unworkable um and uh, uh there's a lot with this this police oh here he is here he is you know what i didn't even see he was in the chat but i was going to share something that he texted me all right constipational yeah. conservative yeah keep attacking cops who are working 16 hour shifts no time off and committing suicide we need more cops and recruiting is done because of the nationwide summer of love brought to you by the dems I okay. So before we saw this in the chat, it's it, how how timely that he jumped in because I told you I know who constitution constipational conservative is. I got this in a text message. Uh, the attacks on cops have to stop. Ninety eight percent of cops are good, and every profession has bad apples. John Cass interviewed a cop dispatcher who quit because of Lightfoot. I challenge Jerry to bring this dispatcher on his show so he can understand the true story and stop the attack on cops who are committing suicide and giving up. We need the cops and leadership now more than ever. And I responded to him. Hold on, Jerry. He lost me at John Cass. Yeah, right? That was my first loss too. And I, I shared with him a, a link to ZipRecruiter, uh, that it had a, a link from ZipRecruiter for uh, – um, streets and sand jobs in Chicago. And I said, that's where these, these dispatchers who are quitting need to go apply then. Because if they're too, wah, I don't, I'm going to commit suicide because I don't like my job. I, I, I'm depressed. They shouldn't have taken the job to begin with. Sorry. No, there's, no, lots of, there's lots of places you can, you can help. This right. City. No compassion. Have, no, for, for these cops who are like, oh, I'm be the job, and I'm, I'm all right by it. Mental health. Sorry, look, that I mean, like look, if, you, if you're having problems with the public not appreciating you for you know uh, your lack of for, accountability, uh, for your lack of accountability, for your unchecked aggression, for your unbelievable amounts of escalation when you should be de escalating, mm -hmm. then maybe find a position where you don't have to deal with all of that stress. Yeah, streets you know, and sand. I told streets you. and sand. I, I'm seriously. The, and the, it park, the paid, park district is looking for help. I hear. My husband is a federal government worker. I mean, he can. He can. You know, he, like there, there are jobs there too. If you want to work for the 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 state in any kind of way, like so. There's there's yeah. There's plenty of jobs that aren't cops. Not to mention, um, uh, in general, as far as stressful jobs are concerned, I know that. Uh, the de the the murder rate of cops on the job or death rate okay, of cops so on the job are lower than um, uh, there there are other jobs I, I don't have them in front of me that have higher higher rates of death on the job I think cab drivers one of them um, but let's, know, so. I want to take a moment though to address this issue of police officers that um, are, are are not doing their jobs. I had a conversation ironically tonight with my mother because she asked me what we were talking about on the national show. And I said, we were talking about cop abuse. Uh, the, the story that came out of California where the sheriffs decided to go to Indiana to harass a collector's car manufacturer because of a vendetta from a rich guy who missed his payments. Anyway, my mom was like, Oh no, they're good cops. I'm like too many cops look at police work as a job, a job benefits pay, what do I get out of it? They don't look at it as public service. 
I've spoken with police officers where I've asked them what inspired you to get into police work, waiting for, well, you know, I want to help people. I want to, and I never got that answer. It was about, well, I saw they were hiring and I saw the benefits were good. The problem is that so many people that go into law enforcement don't look at it as public service. They don't look at it as a privilege and responsibility to really serve and protect. It's a job. Like if you decide you're going to work as a cashier at a jewel store, right? Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Firefighters, I think, have a much greater sense of responsibility and service. Running into burning buildings and saving people, realizing that's a risk of the job. It seems that there's a disconnect from my perception. And I, and again, I want to respect law enforcement. It's hard for me to do so. When people scream about the larger percentage of cops, my response is, why aren't those larger percentage of cops policing the bad apples within their ranks? Yeah, why aren't they reporting each other? Oh, because what? of the story that I just talked about two weeks ago about the woman who got kicked out of her and then ended up having to drive yep. how many hours to her, the news station and you know she got harassed by all of her co-workers why because she was a whistleblower so long as all these quote unquote good cops are not dropping a dime on the bad cops i'm sorry constipational conservative they are as complicit period end of story my compassion my my empathy is out the window because when you constantly say oh 98 of cops are good i'm not seeing it because if 98% of cops were good, we wouldn't be hearing about all these abuses all the time, all across our news cycle, everywhere else. That's it. And also, just so everybody knows, when you say there are the few bad apples, the rest of that saying says that they spoil the whole bunch. Yes. So, right. yes, I agree. There are a few bad apples, and they are spoiling the entire bunch. Um and, and also the other piece that I'll add on to what we're talking about when it comes to um, police, police corruption and all of the issues we have with the police is that I do believe that it's a, a systemic issue, much like the politicians who go into these roles of public service. The incentives are way off. Right. You, you know, so I mean, it's, yeah. it, There's, it's a damage of the institutional framework of law enforcement. And it's why in previous shows we've talked about the need to change how we do public safety in this city and also the country. But uh, let's focus. We'll focus on the city yeah. here since we're in Chicago. I'm going to nip something uh, in the bud right now, though, yeah. real quick. This burns. This frosts my ass. Jerry, please join the police force and lead by example. You always get people throwing that kind of a comment in your face. Well, why don't you go and do something? constipational conservative. There was a time in my life before I lost my leg, I actually considered law enforcement and I wanted to do it because I wanted to help people. And unfortunately, losing my leg at the age of 20 pretty much tossed that possibility for exploration out the window. So don't give me this, go join the police force and lead by example when you know I can't, because otherwise I would. It's a, it's also a bit a of a cop out to say that you would do that because I it's wouldn't. also yeah it's I also would. a bit of a no. cop out because you know we here we are doing a, a news commentary show uh, we are doing what we are supposed to be doing here we're we're raising uh, we're raising uh, the issues and talking about them in a way so people can analyze what's happening so that people will become aware of the things that are happening in the city the problems that the city's having, uh, and you need people to do that. Because if people don't raise their voice and say that there's a problem here or a problem there, then the, then the problems continue. They, they, keep, they keep going. So for you to say, well, why aren't you joining the police uh, department and put your money where your mouth is, so to speak? Look, that's not our job. That's I mean, not, we might as well just run for office while we're at it, right? Like, yeah, we, can right. Run parties, we can run for, for all, office. For all the Maybe I could be a part of the PTA. I could become a Girl yeah. Scout leader while I'm at it. For or all the Boy Scout leader. The Girl Scouts aren't having issues. For um, all the <laughs> bitching of constipational conservative, I constantly ask him, why don't you go run for office? He'll never do it. Or he tells I mean, me, if I don't like what's going on here in America, I should move to another country. No, it's my job. To, it's our job to try to get our leaders. I'm sorry, they're not our leaders. Our representatives to represent and lead the way they're supposed to. It's not my job to bail and run to another country if I don't like it here. Because you know what, constipational conservative, you're willing to settle for less on both parties. It's not a Democrat problem. It's not a Republican problem. They're two heads of the same serpent. 
So why don't you start yeah. holding your side accountable on the Republican side while we regularly hold the Democrats accountable on, on our side over here, even though I wouldn't identify myself as a Democrat. They we, call we regularly the hold uh, we regularly hold the duopoly yes. accountable because I don't I don't know I don't identify with either of those garbage corporate right wing parties tribal and yeah they're both right wing yep 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 yeah 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 so um, it, there there are other numbers that you can check out in the articles in regards to the uh, assault cases. Um, and just really shocking numbers insofar as like rape, you know, rape kits and how, how frequently those are actually, although the, the instances of rape kits being actually investigated has gone up substantially in the last two years. I was really happy with those numbers because I remember having looked at them and they were dismal before. So I think they've increased their, uh, 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 investigations of rape kits by 72 per to 2020. So, but you know, Kira, getting, good back, news. getting back to your story, this really does piss me off as it's reported by block club Chicago, that the cops are not taking it seriously. This mm -hmm. is their job. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So where are the good cops? Well, what is there not to take it's... seriously about someone coming up and fondling yep. women on the street? Like, There's a... it, how is that a joke? Right. It's it's part it's part of the institutional makeup of law enforcement in that they have this type toxic of uh, con it's toxic and condescending uh, towards citizens, um, women, misogynistic. It it can be, uh, and and it's and it's something that really needs to be uh, removed from the force. They have to figure out a new way to do law enforcement because the old way is letting this stuff happen. How long did it take for them to catch this guy? How long did it take for the police to take it seriously? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, he, he started reports of it started in June all the way. we're now in mid August. Um, he assaulted three different women on one day in millennium park. So, I mean, it's it, like right where the tourist areas are, which, you know, like you'd think that they would be concerned again, like the same with the traffic light, right? Where it's like, okay, so out of one mouth you're saying, but we need to make all this money. So we have to make all these concessions, right? But on the other hand, they're like, oh, but actually fuck people's safety because who really fucking cares, right? So that's, that's, what, I'm, that's what I'm witnessing here. Yeah, oh, you're right, Kira. So... All right, Constitutional Conservative made up for his blatant ignorance with a $5 super sticker. Thank you, Constipation. <laughs> and, and he, and he wants to clarify he's a not a Republican, he's an independent. I, I'd never know that from all the uh, links to Mark Levin shows that you always text me. Yeah, and then and then I, I, lo I love Pat's uh, comment because I kind of feel the same way, Pat. Like when I hear like national news talking about like, Oh, but Chicago and all of its violence. I'm just like, I get it, but like seriously, get get our name out of it. It's your not house. look. There's 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 violence and more violence in other cities. It's just because we've always been identified with it be, because the gangster oh. days, right? There's your Kira shimmy. Whoa, Whoa that was nice. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. I'll take more. I'll take more. Uh, uh, stickers and and money. And <laughs> this, dress, this dress does a good job showing my shimmy. I think I'll do one like, too. Yeah, hell. All right, bring it in. Bring it in, everybody. I'm not above it. All right, thanks. That's right. My, my shimmying <laughs> days are long. long let's get past. let's get some tips for that. I've been working out. Okay. There we go. Kira even more so. Kira can kick my ass. Last I always saw her at dinner. It's like, <laughs> oh, girl, you've been working out. <laughs> yeah, I have been working out. That's I've been the getting gun so there. jacked. It's been crazy. Yeah, yeah. Are those <laughs> guns registered, Kira? You're welcome, Constitutional Conservative. Um, <laughs> uh, no, but they are concealed, Carrie. <laughs> he pulls a knife, you pull a gun. He sends one of yours to the hospital, you send one of his to the morgue. That's the Chicago way. Now, do you want to do that? Are you ready to do that? Yeah, yeah. I uh, 
I'm setting uh, personal records in my deadlifts these days. I, yeah. I did a one rep max of 165, which is pretty good. I'm building up to 200 pound deadlift. Um, That's maybe I can go to 250, double my weight. Because what if you I saw Kira in person, she's tiny, but she's like dynamite. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm idiot, Boom. but like, yeah, I'm super duper cheap. There's a There's a lot of power in that <laughs> tiny package. <laughs> it's very fun. Um, oh, and speaking of, you know, a little shameless plug, I'll do the plug again at the end of the show, but I do wrestle on August 27th. It's Saturday at Raji's Rock Club. So if you are in Chicago and you want to support the Chicago Women's Health Center, you should come watch me kick some bitches ass. All right. Wait, so, what's the date again? August 27th. Saturday. Oh, that's a Saturday. Saturday and yeah. let's mark our calendars and go uh, have some we drinks. And go we we get definitely need to cover that event for sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's take some video. Yeah, totally, totally, totally. Well, um, wait, what I, we wait, said, where, what? where is this at again, Kira? Do you have a flyer? Maybe you can put it up on screen. We got to cover it with some video. Yeah. Uh, during the show at some point. Right, I'm so actually on the flyer, so Okay, cool. I wanna I wanna give a shout out to Dominic real um, quick. The behavior of a police force is directly related to the people who hire and pay them. The people are called politicians. Yes. Oh, here's yeah, a good that, that's a great point, Dom. Oh, my wrestling name is Brownie Bruiser. So I'm a Brownie Girl Scout. Cool. Um I've been wrestling since two thousand nine for this league. And I'm one of the OGs, obviously. Um, it'll be my first, uh, my birthday was yesterday. So thank you to all of you. Oh my goodness. That. Happy birthday. I wish forgot. me a happy birthday. Yes. I wish you'd be a text, but I, I whatever. You have one of those every year. <laughs> but this year's was my 40th birthday. So Ooh, this will be my the first big match oh. that I am going to be wrestling in my 40s. So. Get excited, kids. You will not see anything like it again. No, it's not true. You'll probably see something like it again if you come to another show in the future. Um, and, and Pat, it's at Reggie's Rock Club. I think that's at State and 21st. It's off of a red line. Stop. All right. Here's, here's um, what I want to know, though, Kira. I want to know if your wrestling shows are anything like, where is it? This one. Oh, no, come on. That's not it, is it? No, that's not it. Your mask. <laughs> I pulled up the wrong. <laughs> Were you going to do the, was it the no. Stripes mud wrestling? <laughs> yeah, I was trying to bring up the, the scene from Stripes, the mud wrestling. Oh, it screwed up my, there we go. Oh, you, can't we go. Show, you can't show that anyway. There, well, know, there's top, I, tops are removed in that clip, Jerry. I, I'll, I'll, I'll get rid of it before then. It is. Tis okay. Well, let me see. Oh, yeah. Um, where's John Candy? You gotta do it. Yeah, yeah, this I have not seen this movie in so long. This is so funny. I think when uh, we, now I, you guys don't do that uh, on your events, Kara. You don't have people come in from the audience and try to wrestle you. Um, I did have one woman once come in, and it was not on per like it wasn't a planned thing. She came in and she tackled me uh, in the ring, and then I proceeded to kick her ass too. Uh, um, of so, because that's what I do, you guys. So, okay, this was so not planned, but here we go. I'm the one in the white undies. Awesome. Get out of the way, ref. No one wants to see your back. Take down. Versus the killer cupcake. Get her, 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 get her,
So this is obviously an outdoor event and not a uh, Reggie's event, but we used to do this at Three Aces on Taylor Street, the outdoor event. I think what we need to do, Kara, I think we need to bring constipational conservative and have you kick his ass. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Yes, that was. Oh. Come on in. <laughs> he says that's um. what he calls a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm doing on August 27th at Reggie's Rat Club. Um, I've done it a lot. I have, the, I have the 2016 and 2017 champion belt, so I am a good one to watch wrestle. Um, is uh, is it still called the Mud Queens? or Mud or, Queens of okay. Chicago. Yep. That's right. That's us. And all of our proceeds go to the Chicago Women's Health Center. So... Um, and we've done that for years and years. Hippie Saturday, Yay. August 27th at Reggie's Rock Club. Um, Pat, I think it starts. I think the show, the doors probably open at 7 or 8. We have two bands that play ahead of time, and then we wrestle at the end of the night. So you can come basically anytime before 10 p.m., and you'll catch wrestling. Cool. Wow, well, that was a fun little extended plug. <laughs> so anyway, so this was, the, this was probably my... <laughs> Wait, I have, I, have, I have I have one other thing, Kira. Okay, one more thing. Right, because I I believe that I texted you the other day to wish you a happy birthday, but okay. I also want to add this to your happy birthday greetings. <laughs> happy yeah. birthday to Kira. Yay. Happy birthday to Kira. Belated happy birthday, dear Kira. Happy birthday. To you. <laughs> yeah, don't get us struck. <laughs> um, okay, so this uh, this next uh, story was actually uh, <laughs> constitutional. Okay, back to attack. <laughs> no. Hey, hey, so let's funny. be clear. We're trying to help them realize their future potential as That's not right. cops. That would be a great show. That would be a great match. Wrestling the leprechaun. A leprechaun, the leprechaun. <laughs> Indeed. Um, I mean, I think that'd be a really great costume, actually. I'm wrestling next time. Um, yeah, so this was actually the next story was my, I guess you could say my favorite story of the bunch of the day. I mean, d please don't judge me when I say something like that. It's just, it was the most interesting to dive into. We'll put it that way. Okay. So Douglas Park is now home to three of Chicago's biggest music festivals. Summer Smash in June, Heat Wave in July, and Riot Fest to be held next month. And each one temporarily blocks access to the public park for nearly two weeks. For several days in advance of each festival, Douglas Park is fenced off and closed to the public as crews build massive music stages, set up sound systems, vendors, and portable restrooms. Then Tens of thousands of spectators from across the city and even other states descend on North Lawndale, a historically disinvested and over-policed community for the weekend music festivals. Many attendees are young and white and unaware of their pre that their presence can disrupt access to limited resources like the two safety net hospitals next to the park. Some attendees leave trash, destroy property, and even pee in alleys and the yards of neighborhood residents. After each music fest, Douglas Park remains fenced off for nearly another week to help restore the park public use. Um, Ed, do you have um, that video queued up um, for this particular I was, story? I was looking for it. I don't know if I have the correct link. Oh, really? Is okay. it in the show notes? Because I can, I can try to bring it up. Oh, yeah, there's a video. Give me a second. I'll bring it up. Yeah, I think it has a couple of like little buffers. Um, which, ahead of uh, which it. link was it? Um, let me look at the show Chicago notes. Reader. The Reader Chicago one. Reader. Oh, it's on the second page in the show notes. You may not have yeah. seen it because it skipped down it. to the second page. It's going to um, take a moment to load. So Yeah, let's... give it a moment. Give it a moment to load because I think that there are a couple commercials that run ahead of it. And I'll just uh, fill you uh, fill you all in a little bit more on the story. Um, this summer from June through September, residents won't have access to Douglas Park for as many as 47 days, which is nearly 40% of the total days of those months. 
And when you cut off park access to neighborhoods, that means that people lose a lot of opportunity to be in down, uh, in outside spaces because we obviously live in a congested city the you know the opportunity for families and for people to get outdoors usually is you know that we're relying on parks and green spaces to provide that so when you have something like a music festival or several music festivals coming in uh in one and, uh, and obviously this season where the parks would be used the most um, it can cause a lot of issues like now. So again, it's the same thing with the curfew, right? We're telling youths to, you know, uh, not, you know, don't go committing crime or don't go get in trouble, but there's, there's, there's nothing to do, you know? And so this is just another one of those issues stacked on top. Um, resist, uh, residents, not resistance, <laughs> particularly from the North Lawndale and Little Village communities have protested the festivals for years. They started when Riot Fest first arrived at Douglas Park in 2015, and the residents have called, emailed, and written to their aldermen to no avail. This week, residents are appealing directly to musicians to not perform at Riot Fest next month, which would be probably pretty huge if one of the headlining musical acts was like, no, this is not okay. Look at what they're doing to the community. So here is um, the video uh, talking to some of the community members, how they're feeling about uh, the festivals, specifically Riot Fest, but the festivals in general. Oh, this isn't the video. Oh. They look like they're having fun. So this is how it's scrolling through the page, Kira. Here's from the top. Yeah. Oh, oh go, go back one? to that guy. Yeah, that guy. All right. My yeah, Anton God. is the thumbnail. Sorry oh, about that. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I okay. thought it wasn't loading over here. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. I got it up. All right. Nice. That's what she said. Ooh, I've got it up in a moment. Chicago Reader presents. Residents of Douglas Park speak on Riot Fest. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I know. I thought that was funny. You know, that was probably enough. I think that pretty much sums it up. <laughs> Do we need to hear more? No, let me go back. Let me go. Riot Fest? Oh. <laughs> We need that in a clip right there. We do. Oh. We do. Rock, is it rap music? I think it's mainly uh, rock and metal band. Some similar to Lollapalooza on a okay. smaller scale. How do you feel about Riot Fest returning to Douglas Park? They did not trash a neighborhood or uh, the parks or anything like that, which is something that was a concern. Uh, because of so many years it was at Humble Park and they just tore up Humble Park every year. I'm not for it, you know. I wish they Yeah, Humble Park kicked them out. I really did. There was drills, a lot of drill from there going around over that park. You know, kids go over there playing. They find the needles. And oh. it was just weed smoke everywhere. You know what I say? That's a part for kids. I enjoyed the music from sitting right here on my porch. That I really enjoyed everything from sitting on my porch. They should just let the residents know a little more information about it. They put everything else on the trees, uh, on the door. When they when they filming movies, Chicago Fire, they had like posted on the trees, like, you know, letting the residents know no parking at this time. Or the movie will be here early morning, it'll be gone, you know, before residents come. The ride fest not like that. Like I said, they don't warn the residents. If people come home from work, they can't even park their cars. You know, oh. they got park way over here, somewhere, a couple of blocks away. And that's they don't do. My mama didn't even know about it was permit free. parking like, during this time. My mama, you could go. It's free for the residents. But I think they told us the last day of the concert. They never told us that from the start. So pause right here. So oh, one yeah. of just for I'll a little bit in. more context, they had told the residents like, "Hey, you get anybody who is within four blocks of of Douglas Park got free tickets." But this guy is, and they were touting that, like bragging about it. And then this guy in this video is like, they told us the day before it basically closed, like we found out about it. 
And it's like, so either that wasn't available until much later, or they're just not getting the word out. And I'm sure that that is. But what does it have to do with Kira? Does it have well, possibly to do anything with the alderman? Yeah. yeah who's making, yeah, yeah. Who's making well, all the you, decisions Thank you, Jerry, for here. the segue that I, <laughs> that I had certainly already set up. No, <laughs> I, just, I just asked it. I just asked it. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, so, Kira. Who's making hey, the decisions? Um, yeah, so despite the outcry, the number of music, music festivals at the park has grown from one to three, and the elected officials that the residents have asked to halt the festivals have instead offered their support for the events while also accepting tens of thousands of dollars in campaign contribution from festival organizers. Wait, it ain't so. Yeah, yeah. So Sarah Heyman, who has been organizing against music fests for years has tried to meet with Chicago Alderman uh, George Cardenas, 12th Ward, which includes Brighton Park, McKinley Park, and Little Village. But she said it, it feels like he's been unresponsive with her and the community organization she's affiliated with. She still couldn't get the alderman to meet with her even after she joined the Douglas Park Advisory Council. So this woman's like, let me, let me join this council. Let me get in this space. Let me try over here. No response. However, she did send a certified letter to Cardenas, along with a list of complaints, including notes from community meetings. Residents said they want a voice during the permit approval process. The Chicago Park District said heat wave organizers provided evidence the community wanted that festival, which made its debut in Douglas Park in June. But records are showing that heat wave, or heat wave organizers, quote, submitted letters of support from Alderman Cardenas, not from the community. And additional letters of uh, support from three other community organizations. However, two of those groups are based in Pilsen, records show. We are excited to welcome. <laughs> exactly. We are excited to welcome this new festival into the neighborhood and believe that it will bring great opportunities. Cardenas wrote in a letter dated May 25th, 2022 to Chicago Park District Superintendent Rosa Escareño, supporting the heat wave mute. Huh. Two of Park District special events applications revealed that oh, Cardenas has Hold on, Kira. We, we lost you for about 15 seconds here. Can oh, you no. Back up a little? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So um, so basically, uh, the uh, organizers of Heat Wave said like they, they, they've submitted with proof of a lot of community support when it really was organizations from Pilsen and Alderman Cardenas, who said that he supported it, but not actual community members. And then um, Cardenas wrote in a letter, we are excited to welcome this new festival into the neighborhood and believe it will bring great opportunities. A review of Park District special events applications revealed that Cardenas has written letters of support for all three of the festivals. For Riot Fest in 2015 and 16, Summer Smash in 2019 and 22, Heat Wave in 22, and also former Alderman Michael Scott of the 24th Ward, which includes most of North Lawndale, wrote a letter of support for Summer Smash in 2018. Meanwhile, an examination of campaign finance records show those aldermen received tens of thousands of dollars in campaign contributions from festival festival promoters. Both aldermen also received contributions from a political committee controlled by a registered lobbyist for two of the Douglas Park Music Fests. Cardenas claims that his support for the music festivals has nothing to do with the campaign contributions he's received. Hanky. Well, what does that mean, bitch? Hanky. Oh, strange. Weird. Well, don't you say strange or weird? I mean, hanky, that has no meaning. Well, we say hanky. I don't want you guys using words around me that got no meaning. <laughs> Stand exactly. by. Hold on. This Blow job! Blow job! Blow job! <laughs> This is such oh. a crock of shit. Okay, continue. Perfect. I love, I love it. Um, honestly, obviously, there's pieces of policymaking, also fundraising, which are separate and run separately by different folks that organize these, whatever. He's so full of shit. So that was his quote. Since 2016, the promoters behind the Riot Fest, Summer Smash, and Heat Wave Festivals collectively have donated $44,650 to Cardenas. Forty-four thousand dollars to an alderman. A lot of money. Yeah. So. A lot um, of money. And then Scott, from 2017 to 2021, the 24th ward received seventeen thousand five hundred in two con uh, campaign contributions from promoters of two different festivals. 
Um, Scott declined to comment for the story. He stepped down from his post in 2022 and Mayor Lori Lightfoot appointed his sister because that's what you do. Uh -huh. um, that's how we do things here. Of course she did. <laughs> of course she did. Oh, my God. Anyway. Right. The corruption. It's Oh it's almost God. like you can't make this shit up, right? No. And, and, <laughs> but Kira, it's like right in our faces. It's like, you know, are they laughing at Are they literally like laughing at us behind closed doors? They have to be. Those so blatant and it. did not sway my opinion on this music festival. Are you kidding? Of course sure. not. Sure. Um, so WBEZ asked the Chicago Park District whether it's a conflict of interest for an alderman to write a letter of support of the app. Oh, yeah, no, no, we don't think that's a conflict of interest. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, and in a lengthy email in which it responded to a number of questions, the agency said the letter required adding, adding the park district quote, looks to a variety of other factors to determine permit approval. Um, yeah, okay, so... Not to approve of your methods. Yeah? Well, you're not from Chicago. That's right. That's right. We're all greased here. <laughs> so here's here's also some interesting stuff, and I, I dug in a little bit deeper on this. I, you know, I'll, I just want your opinions on what I found, right? I'm just gonna sh I'm just gonna throw a few just like facts and statistics your way, and you tell me what you think. So, so in June, based on community feedback, Cardenas had posted on his Facebook account that he rejected the pro uh, proposal to bring a music festival to McKinley Park. And that was mostly because after he had posted uh, an inquiry about whether or not a music festival should come to McKinley Park, apparently there was a huge outpouring of communication saying, no, do not do it. Don't have a festival here. And so after that happened, he posted on his Facebook page, quote, McKinley Park will not host a music festival. Everyone's thoughtful comments are much appreciated. Um, and then... Uh, as North Lawndale and Little Village residents have expressed about music festivals in Douglas Park, McKinley Park residents were concerned with traffic, parking, loud music, access to the park. And then Heyman, Sarah Heyman, the woman that I was talking about earlier, says, how come Douglas Park residents haven't been given the same consideration? And so the very first thing I thought to myself is money, right? People in Douglas Park probably don't have as much income, right? And so I looked up the average incomes and actually i was kind of wrong based on what i found in in my searches um where mckinley park while it, they do have a higher average annual household income it's only about like a thousand dollars more and then the uh, median income sits at you know at about like there's probably like a two or three thousand dollar difference between the two so i didn't actually see a really big difference in the income um, and I was like, okay, that's interesting. And so I was like, well, like, what's the racial makeup of the neighborhoods? And I saw a little bit more of a disparity there where McKinley is 56.4% uh, Hispanic. Um, there are less than 1% uh, black residents, 17% white residents, and 25% Asian residents. And you look at Douglas Park, and they're about on par with the Hispanic residency at 54.9%, so almost 55%. But then um, they compared to McKinley Park's less than 1% black residency with 35.7% black residency, less than 1% are, or less than 1% are Asian, and then 8.2% are white. So there is definitely a racial disparity between both of the neighborhoods there. And my curiosity then, of course, becomes like, is that the reason why McKinley Park would get uh consideration from their alderman versus douglas park um it, it's you know it's just something again i i looked up the numbers they they are what they are and we see these sort of trends happening all of the time especially when it comes to things like um pollution right and and these festivals are largely noise pollution not to mention like every single story i read is it talks about trashing the parks yeah. you know and all of the work to like actually get the park um fixed up and renovate re-renovated again every time it actually takes away space from the park so i you know i do see a trend inside a, like you know a racist trend inside of how we are managing 
where we're deciding to put these festivals. Um, well, it's like in our, it's like it's like where we we're relocating all of our industrial toxic waste recyclers, right? It's in all the neighborhoods yeah. that are exactly. not are, where people of color live. It's Terrible. you know, let's put it over there where it doesn't bother like the affluent white communities. Yep, absolutely, and that and that's uh, that's what I was thinking when when I saw Under that life. quote from yep. Heyman, where I was like, yeah, why would he have the consideration in a different manner than uh, than for Douglas Park? Um, and then additionally, there are two really major hospitals in the areas that are largely impacted by these festivals. They need to train at Duncan Morgan down. <laughs> yeah, for sure. There's Mount Sinai Hospital um, with a 10% increase. Look, they're going to have the music festivals in the same uh, communities where they, they're, they're doing all the recycling and doing all the polluting. So come enjoy our toxic music festival. <laughs> Sound pollution and environmental pollution. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Super. <laughs> Super. That's right. Oh, well, we lost her for a second there. Oh, sorry, no, I, 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 no, no, my, my mistake. My, my cursor. <laughs> sorry, Kira. And if you live four block within four blocks of Douglas Park, you can enjoy the toxic fun for free. Come on down, but only on the last half day. Um, anyway. <laughs> oh. So anyway, there are two major hospitals here too, which is a serious issue. Um, Mount Sinai Hospital saw about 10% increase in the number of patients visiting its emergency room during the weekend, um, music festivals. Um, and then on the first day of last year's Riot Fest, 110 uh, patients visited the 23 bed emergency room. In addition, records show that the level one trauma center at Mount Sinai was placed temporarily on bypass, a time during which ambulances that would normally bring patients to the hospital are diverted to other hospitals. And that's usually because beds are full, so they have to actually bypass the hospital. A St. Anthony emergency room nurse who was asked to remain anonymous for fear of retaliation said, quote, it can really make it difficult, not just for employees to get there, but also for emergency services to get through. She said the festivals are creating serious problems for the hospital. She said festivals also bring more visitors to her ER. It was busy during last year's Summer Smash Festival. The ER was packed, she said. There were just people lining the hallways. That causes real difficulty for other community members who are used to accessing their health care at St. Anthony. Hmm. It takes beds away from those patients. The year Riot Fest moved to Douglas Park, soccer players, oh, this is a, a little bit heartbreaking too, soccer players said they noticed two soccer fields then disappeared. Um, now the players say they keep oh. losing it. I beg your pardon, what did you say? Exactly. And two then soccer uh, fields Oscar disappeared? Disappeared, gone, gone. Oscar Tru Trujillo uh, runs the league. He typically rents three soccer fields for nine weeks but the festivals block the fields that he's rented now. A children's soccer league serving hundreds of students was canceled last year. A whole league canceled. Get rid of it. Fuck it. Right? Those kids don't need to play soccer. No. Douglas Park. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's, it's cuckoo. They're people. not a priority because they're people of color. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, so one resident of 26 years, Rebecca Wolfram, said, I literally tried to walk into the park. I think it was the first of the days that they were setting up around June 7th. And like the guy said, you can't come in here. And I said, but it's a park. It's a public park. And he said, it's not a public park. Not now. It's private property. Wow. Oh, yeah. my God. The balls. But. Laughing at us all. Laughing at the people in that community. And what and is is I mean you've got you've obviously got all their manic corruption here, clearly. Uh, and the park district is going along with it, so they are you've got corruption there. Yep. Uh, you know, I'm surprised that uh, the whole thing isn't sponsored by Amazon. <laughs> I couldn't yet. for the life of me yet, right? Uh, knock on wood. I couldn't for the life of me find how much Riot Fest pays the park district for renting Douglas Park. I I, I looked at the yeah, that was rough. you sent, and I was like, where the hell is the information on this? And I, I could not find it. So if anybody in our chat or anybody else knows how much Riot Fest pays... Because I was like, well, because yeah. I always like to look at every angle of the story. It's like, okay, so they're shitting on this park. Great. 
residents don't have access to it. That sucks. Um, we're, you know, we're ruining, you know, people's traditions and, and community activities and events. We're tearing apart people's opportunity to be outside at least. OK, fine. How much money is it bringing us? And there's just no information. The only thing I kept reading was that it's a private it's a you know, it's, it's a private company, but they still have to pay rent. I and mean, I, I can't believe I couldn't find that information anywhere. Um, so yeah, I would, there, I'm super I, curious. Yeah, I had I had pulled up the Cranes article just to see if there was any information, and and the the only comparison we can actually use at this point is is Lollapalooza. Yep. Where the, where the par, where the park district where they were saying that C three uh, was uh, under their arrangement with the park district was going to give the park districts between five and twenty percent of the revenue. Now, I don't know if they have a similar uh, setup for Riot Fest. Uh, they don't actually say uh, yeah. what what the dollar signs are going to be in this Which, thing. Which, don't you think that's a little weird, too? That it's we super weird. That we wouldn't be able to see that? We should, I mean, we should be able to find information somewhere about, uh, about the dealings going on between the Park District and Riot Fest. I just don't know how to look that up to see... Uh, if we have to do a FOIA or if we can just that look up public thought. records uh, from the park district to find out what type of uh, deal or income or revenue stream they have with the Riot Fest people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's like I, I wanted to find and I can't believe Cardenas and all of his corruption didn't think to like point out, well, look at the economic boom this is going to be right like for the area look at all these small he didn't say any of that so i can't imagine it's that impressive and that's just me being cynical and driving and making like jumping to conclusions based on well, the fact so, that i can't find it well and and we can also <laughs> we can also <laughs> guess <laughs> we can also guess that you know well they got their campaign donation so after that they don't care yeah. so uh a, um, i mean other than maybe asking to make sure that they they put the park back the way they found it after they leave um maybe donate to some type of youth program but we don't have any information on that Mm -hmm. yeah and i do know that a lot of music festivals uh including riot fest do have like a community outreach program um but it doesn't really seem like a lot of the community members both in that video and and many many of the quotes that i was reading were all that jazzed in honest in honesty about about the situation um the you know the the one woman was pretty neutral mannered when she said i enjoy the music on my porch it's very enjoyable i was like that's a one positive comment uh, <laughs> that i that i got about that festival so and you know it just just look back to what was it 2017 or 18 when they got tossed out of humble park and that ought to tell you enough about what the environment must have been like for the residents of that neighborhood because it's like if it was a huge economic boon for this um for this area then they probably wouldn't have so eagerly kicked them out yeah um yeah all right darlings let's move on anything from the audience that we want to make sure to highlight in regard to our toxic fests no we're good so okay. going, thank you uh, it's hard to tell, but I think our, our live chat is getting lonely. I'm lonely. All right. Well, <laughs> shut the fuck up, audience. <laughs> and that's funny. <laughs> All right. Anyway. So uh, the next story is about our after school workers. So, you know, we already saw, you know, we see teachers, we see nurses having a shortage of workers, uh, daycare providers, and now after school programs, people who run those programs. Um, the ACT Now Coalition, After School for Children and Teens Now, held a press conference last week to bring attention to challenges facing after school workers at a time when districts have an influx of federal coronavirus relief money to help get students back on track after the pandemic disrupted education. Um, Teresa Doddard Campbell, uh, program director for Lights On for After School of East Moline uh, School District 37 said that her workers often work second jobs for additional income. A lot of times we'll find that our staff have to find supplemental income. So many people that are working in our programs are 
uh, coaches and leaders in other areas within our community. So we are seeing this trend among many of our workforce, teachers, nurses, and police right now. This is particularly troubling because a lot of the reports are showing that the remote learning has set students back quite a bit. And it's at these after school programs where students have a lot of opportunities to either catch up with their work or get ahead on their work. Um, and, you know, looking into uh, some of the ways that kids were impacted by uh, the uh, pandemic, uh, analysis is showing that the impact of pandemic K through 12 student learning is significant leaving students on average five months behind in mathematics and four months behind in reading by the end of the school year. The pandemic widened pre-existing opportunity and achievement gaps hitting historically disadvantaged students the hardest. In math, students in majority black schools ended the year with six months of unfinished learning. Hmm. Fuck. Students in low income schools with seven. High schoolers have become more likely to drop out of school and high school senior and high school seniors, especially those from low income families, are less likely to go on to post-secondary education. The crisis has an impact on not just academics, but also the broader health and well-being of students, with more than 35 percent of parents very or extremely concerned about their children's mental health. The fallout from the pandemic threatens to depress the generations, this generation's prospects and constrict their opportunities far into adulthood. The ripple effect may undermine their chances of attending college and ultimately finding a fulfilling job that enables them to support a family. Our analysis suggests unless steps are taken to address unfinished learning, today's students may earn $49,000 to $61,000 less over their lifetime, owing to the impact of the pandemic on their schooling. The impact of the U.S. economy could amount to $128 billion to $188 billion every year as this cohort enters the workforce. So now we have, we have this is this situation with education, and now we have this situation with teachers, and now we have this situation with after school workers, where students would supposedly get caught up on being behind with their studies. Unfortunately, more than sixty percent of respondents to a survey recently of after school workers said that they're making less than forty five thousand dollars a year, and since they have to supplement their earnings with other income, sometimes it's just easier to quit. Right. So, um, you know, especially especially for anybody who has child child care or, you know, uh, 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 college bills to pay. Right. College loans to pay where most of these after school workers are women who hold at least a bachelor's degree. Um, advocates notice that low wages and burnout will make it harder to find skilled workers to fill positions and employers often do not have money for professional development. Don't have or won't spend exactly or, or don't want well i mean it I'm advocates not, notice or won't prioritize well you know also you want you want to keep in mind that it's like if they're not getting the money from any federal uh from any federal spending it's like where where do they get the money for uh educating their workforce um you know i i do think that um, while as a company, my company has helped to educate our people, it is, it's a huge, it's a huge investment. And I think that that is something that the state could and, and should help with. Um, cause it sounds like, it sounds like these mm -hmm. folks are probably pre spread pretty thin at this point, as far as, uh, uh resources are concerned. Yeah. And as far as the city of Chicago is concerned, they could, they could do their part by yes. supporting these programs. I That's mean, what I think, yes. You know, they're talking about uh, a $130 million uh, budget shortage, which it just happens to be the same amount as that uh, monstrosity that we keep coming up with a new name for every week, uh, that you came up with the, what, four or five new ones today, Kira, for that, <laughs> uh, for that training <laughs> academy. Yeah. Uh, stop, resist you know, stop resisting ten is is probably st stop resisting ten. Yes, um, <laughs> Baconburg. We, we can ha we can have after school programs. We can afford to pay uh, these people to to support the system, but you have to want to do it, and you have to have people in government positions, local government positions to prioritize that mm -hmm. and we don't have that no. because we have this warped sense that we that we can solve so many problems uh by uh 
giving money to law enforcement, throwing more money at the police. Um, yep. It's you can't take every problem and treat it like it's a nail, and the only solution is a hammer. You I feel like. I feel like I'm on autopilot as we talk about this stuff, Ed. <laughs> uh, we uh, we are on autopilot because every week we talk about how there Same. are solutions. Yep. There are solutions that are other than the police department for public safety. Uh, yeah. For right, 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 the supporting police your police community. Everything. And it's not, it's not, we're not slamming the police when we say this. We're saying we need to use our resources better. Yes. Absolutely. And the police, I mean, and, and like the other piece of it is like, we, we do want the police to be safe. We want the police to be trained well. We don't want them putting themselves in un un unnecessary danger. Not to mention, I mean, I would assert that there are probably a lot of police that have an issue with the, gu the gun culture in America because that makes their lives so of much course. more stressful. Of course. So much more stressful. Um, I, everybody's got a gun. It's like, uh, what? yeah, I, I don't know. I do Solve have a gun problem. You don't have to keep throwing more money at the police department. That's yeah, exactly. All right. Exactly. Simple because then police aren't going to be like, you know, feeling us, us against them. Lives, us against right? them. I got to get home alive at night as opposed to, geez, how can I work with the community that I'm, that I might be forced to live in that I look at as my neighbors to like, you know, live safely together and work together as opposed to they're all, they're all going to shoot me because I know they can get guns. Yep. 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 I, yeah, I, I do think that is probably one of the biggest issues. Um, uh, along with obviously the training, um, and the okay. culture and the culture. Yep. 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 Um, yeah, so many things, but I, it is all fixable. It's all, it's all fixable it if we had. It is. If we had civic well. representatives that yeah. understood were we are cycling in the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over and over again, thinking we're going to get different results. It has not changed anything yet. Absolutely so we have not. to re-examine and change some parameters to see, look, even if it's short term, let's th start throwing money in the neighborhoods and defunding the police, not, not, not eliminating them but redirecting and reallocating resources to see if maybe that works. If it doesn't, fine, we're wrong, but at least we gave it a try. But right now it's the same thing over and over and over again. So you can't even like determine if it worked, if it really is working or not, or if it's, if we're just crazy to even suggest it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And other, I mean, other than looking of, at other examples. And speaking of doing the same thing over and over again, uh -oh. Yep. Thank you. Oh, Ed, that was exactly the segue I was going to say. Like, and speaking of, here we go. 1,800 right. spaces have been metered oh. since Lightfoot took office in 2019. City records oh. show. Since Lightfoot took office in May 2019, oh. the new parking meter spots have collected $14.6 million. And those are just the new meters. With the amount going up each year, as more metered spaces have been added to the grid, the city records show. You dicks. What the fuck were you thinking? The new meters are the latest twist on an ongoing saga that has enraged Chicagoans for more than a decade, focused mostly on the city's decision 14 years ago to sell control of all citywide parking meters for 75 years, which is still insane to me. For 1.1... Do you remember how, how little amount of time really city council... Do you remember how, how limited the amount of time was the city council had to look at that deal and how quickly it was rammed through the parking mm -hmm, meter deal? Mm -hmm, I do. I mean, I wasn't even at this point in time, like I wasn't even paying much attention to Chicago politics because I was a little newer to the city and I was pretty transient in my younger days. So I didn't really have a connection. Um, but I remember when that deal went through and I remember like, whoa, that's a fucked up deal. Yeah. Um, the private firm has already recouped its investment plus another $500 million. So they're, they're laughing all the way to the bank. Lightfoot inherited, inherited the infamous parking meter deal, but. Oh, but. City Council's. Oh, pardon. I'm back. What's your big, what's your big butt, Kira? <laughs> but as mayor-elect, she said she'd take a look at the meter agreement signed by former Mayor Richard M. Daly with the City Council's approval. Yeah. Approval saying as mayor. 
she will try to improve the deal for Chicagoans. Yeah, and didn't three, Rom say the same thing? He did. He did. I take responsibility for what happened because it happened on my watch. I'm okay. I'm in Japan, suckers. <laughs> you can't catch me. My God. Yeah. 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 Well, oh, and then, then oh, hey, right. Head and I use head and shoulders. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the story, right? Uh, this article, this particular article goes into the history of the meters, how much money it's made on an annual basis, and even some of the steps that Rahm Emanuel took to kind of band-aid the situation, but never actually reverse it. Um, there's just obviously, again, no political will to change what this situation is. Um, I have a feeling, you know, it has something to do with money. <laughs> I, I don't, I can't imagine how. Uh, the city's not even getting a piece of the parking I know, meters, right? I know, which is crazy. It's crazy that, to me. Which there, is like, like, I mean, that should have been, now they can be a terrible deal that was. And now yeah, they're, no, they're sure. going to be NASCAR awful, for peanuts. NASCAR for peanuts. I think the city only makes money off of ticketing, which is a really bad look. Yeah, it is. I, uh, on my way home driving uh, today, I was driving up Halstead, uh, and I couldn't tell you how many cars I saw that had those boots on them, the, those yellow boots oh, on the wheels. And I'm like... Uh, yeah, that that would be the first that we should. I, if I if we haven't added that to the manifesto yet, the boots have to go away, forever. Yeah, people can't uh, people can't pay their tickets to avoid those boots if there's a boot on their car, and they have to use that car to get to work. So mm -hmm. you're it's a self defeating. Uh, situation putting the boot on the car it's punitive and all it does is punish the working poor it is super expensive to be poor i was really really broke for the majority of and my adult life yeah. and it was very expensive to be and that's not a, and it's not a contradiction for kira to be saying that what's that uh, p people may think well when you say it's super expensive to be poor mm -hmm. it's not it's not it's not a contradiction in terms there. No, um, no, absolutely not. Because the tr the truth is you can't afford to pay you can't you, you can't do down payments on things. You can't stock up on things. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't afford to do things in bulk. Uh, yep. uh, and you can't, so you're you can't paying, take advantage of anything, you know, that's mm -hmm. uh, and also for me, the banks were taking out overdraft fees, you know, so I was paying like yeah. two two fifty in overdraft fees every single month just to meet my bills because that was the strategy that I had figured out to make it. So, um, so yeah. yeah. So they end up, I mean, they end up spending, they may end up having to not spend as much in, on a short term basis, but end up spending more in the long run mm -hmm. just yep. to try and, and stay ahead or even just to keep, get keep level. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the amount of times I had enough in enough in my bank account just to go to a grocery store and buy fifty dollars worth of groceries was a rarity. You know, um, I had I had other ways of doing things, that, and I got by, obviously. But um, but it was really really hard. And forget about being sick. <laughs> I, I didn't see a doctor, and I probably put myself. I know I put myself in a lot of danger not uh, not going to a doctor for a long time. So it's. It's it's these, rough and, these, and, these, tra and these, yeah, the traffic extortion. I'm 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 looking on social media. I'd seen a great image, and of course I can't find it now. Had I known we were talking about this with enough notice, someone had uh, dropped off a boot with their tire attached to it in front of City Hall. That's awesome. I know. Yes. I'm trying to I find the image to share, but I can't find it. It's all good though because I turn into a pumpkin in five minutes. So here's what I want to do in the next five minutes is I want to plug a few um, opportunities for people to get involved in uh, their Chicago community. And so um, just uh, just so y'all know what's going on, um, this is actually from uh, Kathy 
power, she shared this with us. Northwestern uh, SNAHP is collaborating with Chicago nonprofit One North Side in a direct action in front of the offices of Ambetter at 200 East Randolph Street on Monday, the 22nd at 8 a.m. Um, this week, a class action lawsuit was filed against Ambetter's parent company, Centene. The plaintiffs claim that Centene gave customers incorrect lists of provider networks. And when the plaintiffs oh, called providers under, I know this is fucked up, under their listed network, very few of those providers actually accepted Ambetter insurance. Yeah, yeah Ambetter is one of the providers on the uh, on the healthcare exchange. Uh-huh, that's right. Uh, if you're... If you're, yeah, if you're, if you're uh, even able to avoid, uh, to afford to pay your monthly premiums. It's like uh, the one that you can it, afford if you just didn't make the cut. And, and they're doing this garbage on top of all the rest. Healthcare, once again, I will say, well, healthcare is, a, health insurance is a scam. Insurance is not healthcare. Nope. We need not. a national healthcare system. That is comprehensive and covers everybody, including medical, uh, excuse me, including medical, dental, and optical vision. Mm-hmm. And we need mm-hmm. to make sure that it is something that the government pays for almost entirely. Uh, it should be zero out of pocket for anyone. They should not have to deal with. Uh, scrounging up change for medical prescriptions. They, that medical prescriptions should be free. Insulin should be free. Absolutely, especially insulin. And these are not radical things I'm saying. No, Other countries have national health care systems. Maybe some of them pay a little bit of tax uh, to offset some of that. Our government technically doesn't even have to do that. If the resources exist they can pay for them. The only thing the government needs to do is cut a check. So if we set up a system, we make it comprehensive, we make it cover everybody, and we make it impossible for the government to not pay the bill. From the same, That's all we got to do. From the same account that's cutting checks to Ukraine. Hey, I have to step away and go to the restroom. I will be right back. Sounds good. Um, so yeah, so that action, if you want to support that action, um, I put in the chat, a link to register for the action. And also you can always find all of the information in our show notes, um, uh, in the description box. So check it out Monday morning, the 22nd, uh, downtown. Um, and then the other items that I wanted to share with everybody, and again, all of this, all of this, all of this, all of this is in the um, is in the uh, description notes. Um, but I am going to put everything into the chat too, so that um, everybody can see uh, what there is to see. And sorry, I'm bogarting the chat with long descriptors here. Maybe I should do this from a different account. Anyway, um, so the first thing I put in there was uh, August 16th, 23rd, and 30th at 5 p.m. Eastern, uh, 4 p.m. Uh, 4 p.m. Central, Black Voters Matter is doing a member orientation on Tuesdays during the month of August. Black Voters Matter's mission is to increase civic engagement and power building in predominantly black communities. And there is a link that you can um, go and mobilize with Black Votes Matter. And that's on Tuesday. Let me give you a shorter link here. Hold on a second. Thank you, sir. Um, and there then we, we also, so that is if you want to get involved in civic matters and, um, help power building in predominantly black communities, um, on August 20th, Saturday, August 20th, um, I need an a.com has one of their digital escort training. So if you want to train to become, uh, an escort for women who are getting abortions, uh, you can go to, uh, the, the link there. Jer- uh, not Jerry. Ed, are you taking care of links for me? Or yeah, I got uh, should it. I? I got okay. It. I got it. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, and so that's I need an A.com. Um, and then August 28th, uh, uh, 3 p.m. Pacific. So what is that? 5 p.m. Central. Self managed abortions are easy and safe. And you can find out how to be a self uh, managed abortion buddy in this training. So I actually have a girlfriend who um, does uh, uh, self managed uh, abortions. And so. There is a way for you to uh, perform safe abortions for yourself. 
and um, and and uh, for other people. And actually, I also I didn't get around to talking about it, but in our show notes, I also put a little ten minute piece about uh, Jane, which is uh, Jane uh, Jane's place, which is all about how women back in the before before uh, Roe v. Wade passed. Um, uh, basically, uh, they, women were already giving, giving each other abortions. Um, and, uh, and, and that organization was called Jane. And there's a little listening that some of our audience members might find interesting as well. So those are some of the things you can get involved with around the city. Definitely check them out if any of that sounded intriguing to you. And please, please, please check out the cho- the show notes. Don't feel like you need to get like get all the information before the show ends and then it's gone it's it's all there for you compiled nicely and neatly uh so that folks can access it and and get active take action we need everybody on deck nowsies okay um any anything uh, you guys want to add before i give us a wrap up and and take us out uh-uh all right killer I'm whale good. nice all right well we Come. will go ahead and wrap it up yeah. what's up ed Come back and see us on Friday. Actually, I don't know if I'm going to be on Friday. Uh, I am going. I uh, going to spend some time with the family out in the bleachers. And mm-hmm. if I do make it home in time and don't have after game events, I will try to attend this glorious Friday live stream. I might be looking for a co-host then, because I know that uh, Kit told me tonight he can't join us. Right. So, uh, Kira, if you're free, or else I'll. Toss a tether out. Maybe I can get Ilhan on the show. I know I've been talking a while about bringing him on. Uh, maybe this will be an opportunity. And if you can't join us, and Kira's not available, and Kit's not, yeah, available, my family is coming guest. over on Friday. So okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, bummer, bummer, Pat. You would have been a great guest too. Um, cool, cool, cool. Well, um, uh, Jerry, everybody knows that they can likely see you this Friday. Then same yes. time, same place here. Anywhere else you want to plug before? Before we head out? Uh, yeah. You know what? Let me quickly bring it up. Hold on a second. Oreo. Of course, Oreo is all over my dashboard, my keyboard here. Uh, stand by, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, not, oh, wait, wait. Here we go. Hold on. I'm very proud because I just uh, redesigned and um, just redesigned my website. You can find me at nightstar.com, N-I-T-E-S-T-A-R, where uh, if you're curious, you can see all the fun stuff I've produced as a director, producer, and um, director. So, yeah, I'll take that off. Corporate stuff, feature films, music videos, blah, 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 blah. But check out nightstar.com, N-I-T-E-S-T-A-R.com, because I'm always very excited to share the other work that I do separate from Chicago Corner. Woo-hoo. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Awesome, Jerry. And how about for you, Ed? Oh, well, uh, if you want to make Chicago-style pizza at home, head over to realdeepdish.com. You've got uh, several recipes there. One will teach you how to make authentic Chicago-style deep dish. Uh, If you want to get a little more complicated, uh, it's got recipes for the tavern-style thin crust. It's super popular in the city. Uh, And you can even try to make that caramelized crust uh, style that's popular at Pequod's. you got to use a lot of ventilation when you're making that style. So open all the windows. You've got some fan that'll fit in the window. Have it blowing outward. You're going to kick up a lot of smoke with that style. But it is totally worth it when you get it right. Absolutely. I still need some. uh, We've got to coordinate how to get some over here before a Friday show. Right? Yeah. Well, we'll have to do yeah. a pizza night on, you know, maybe maybe a Thursday. And that would be awesome. Oh, that sounds good so to me. Let's, let's figure then, out a time that works for everybody, and uh, I'll get uh, all the ingredients together. And we'll, cool. We'll do some I pizza. think I could swing that. I think I could swing that for sure. Um, and then, uh, of course, you can see me next Tuesday right here, same time, same place. You can also find me at comfyfitness.com, which is my company where I help people find radiance in their physical existence. Um, and then 
like I was sharing before, this is Mud Queens of Chicago. This is our uh, events ticketing page. As you can see, I am right here. That is yours truly. Yeah, it's a hot shot of me. Get it. Ha. So. <laughs> yes! It should be a lot of fun. It always is. It's a super rowdy time. Bring all your rowdy friends. You'll just love it. Do you want me to guide us out, Kira? I would love that. Thank all you. All right. Much. Thank you, Chicago. Bye bye. We love you. We'll see you next time. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.